Hi, my name is Bobby Font, and I'm a teaching artist working with the Hispanic Society Museum. In my own artwork, I use photography to create constructed images. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm a high school student from Queens, New York. Today we're going to be talking about a still life painting called Fruits of Fraga by Spanish painter Miguel Villadrich Villa. Afterward, we're going to be making our own photographic piece based on this painting. For this project, all you'll need is a camera or a camera phone, some cloth or fabric to act as the base of your still life, and whatever still life materials you've decided to use. I'm using candlesticks, plus a few extra things to fill in some space. First, what what do we see when we look at this painting? I see a bunch of fruit. <laughs> There's a, a melon uh, that's been cut up, and, um, and maybe those are oranges on this tall uh, platter type thing. Mm -hmm. And then to the sides, there's um, these flowers in these vases. So as we're looking at this, what's another thing that we're, we're thinking about? In specifically, in terms of painting, because I know that you're a painter, painting and also in photography, what is like one of the more important things that we think about um, when we're setting up a composition? Um, lighting. Lighting, exactly. So when we're looking at the lighting in like a photograph or in a painting, the things that we are thinking about the most are three things. We have our shadows, we have our highlights, and we have our midtones. Now, midtones are anything that is not super bright or super dark. Anything that is um, very, very dark is in shadow, and anything that is really, really bright is in is a highlight. So when we're looking at a painting or a photograph or anything that we're making, we're thinking about it in terms of those three different lighting components. Now, this painting, being that it's very high contrast, there's a lot of dark and there's a lot of brightness. What is it about the, let's say the highlights and the midtones and the shadows that is drawing your eye? And where does your eye go to first? My eye goes straight to the melon. Me too. <laughs> Why is that? Why does your uh, eye immediately go to the melon? Well, it's it's sort of uh, positioned in the center, and and also the, the like bright orange color of the inside of it. When we're looking at this painting, it's not very varied in color, right? It's there's actually it's quite a limited palette. What do we think the reason behind that would be? You know it. You know the word like it brings like everything together. What's that word again? Cohesive. Yeah, it it makes the painting uh, more cohesive, and you know there's not just like a mishmash of different colors everywhere. It sort of brings the whole painting together. There's a lot of like organic natural elements like the fruits and the flowers, but also these uh, man-made more. Uh, artificial type things such as the uh, vases and the and the pots. For our version of it, what we're going to do is we're going to make a photograph using our cell phone by setting up a still life. Instead of making it only fruits, we will pick our own object. When I put together my still life, I always start by putting some fabric down to act as the base. This will give me a smooth working area for me to put my objects onto. When you're setting up your still life, make sure to always keep in mind how you're going to be taking the photograph. You want to make sure that nothing's in the frame that you don't want in the frame. If you're going to use candles like I've used, make sure to have a parent present. When you're setting up your still life, make sure you're keeping in mind the lighting. 
Setting your still life up next to an open window is a great way to get the natural sunlight to light your photograph. Or you could set up your still life using whatever lights you have. Before you take your photo, make sure to always pause and look at each corner of the frame to make sure that you have everything you want to photograph. I like to take a bunch of pictures just to make sure I got one I really like. So I set up my candles in a way that I felt was reminiscent of the original painting. Yeah, I think it's really cool and it's like, I like um, the fact that you decided to uh, light the candles because it brings a little movement into it. It looks like the fire is like moving. It sort of has the same vibe as the original painting. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> now let's take a look at how Emily created her still life photograph. I chose to set mine up in my backyard outside. It was sort of gloomy day and there wasn't the best lighting and coming through the windows. So I was like, uh, what if I just go straight outside? I wanted there to be sort of a background and not just like the grass in my backyard. I set up this sort of sheer white curtain I have a lot of house plants. I thought that represented my home and I set them on top of the table and arranged them by the height. I just wanted to make it sort of even around the table. I threw some rocks and some other flowers to make it seem a little more busy and lively. In the original painting, uh, it's very still. <laughs> In mine, I wanted to sort of make some movement somehow. So I took the rest of the uh, curtains, I laid them, I sort of intertwined the curtains like throughout the phases, made it sort of flowy. Okay, so this is one of my end results and I feel like this photo really captures the environment I'm in. I really like the colors I chose and I like the fact that I decided to um, shoot it outside. I like how I threw in the other curtains like on the table to like get some movement, much more lighter colors. You definitely incorporated a lot more range of color and also a lot more lightness into yours. This is a lot brighter and it feels very, it feels very like late spring. I think you did a really great job. I think it's really beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now let's take a look at what our friends around the world have made.
Thank you to everyone who made art with us today. If you'd like to post your work online, please tag the Hispanic Society and also use the hashtag StillAtHomeLife. I can't wait to see all the cellars you create.